properly posted. Yes. Okay. I would next need a motion to approve our 14 point agenda. May I make that motion, please? Yes, Supervisor Brewer, thank you. That and I will second. second. Thank you, Ms. Chicker. All right, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, um, does anyone have any corrections or comments on the minutes from our last meeting? If not, we'll declare those approved and move on to number six, which is the public hearing portion of our meeting. So I'm going to call that to order. So we have the 2025 Health and Human Services budget and citizen comments relating to 2025 Health and Human Services programs and services. Is there anyone present or online that would like to make a comment as a member of the public? Sometimes people have asked three times. Okay, so I'll ask again is there anyone from the public who would wish to make a comment? Madam Chair? Yes. Uh, Brianna Turk, I would imagine that's Dave Turk is online. Brianna works with our department. Oh. Okay. So. Thank you. Uh, one more time is there anybody from the public who would like to make a comment? Okay, if not, then we are going to close the public hearing portion of our meeting and move on. Uh, number seven is also public comment as our normal agenda. So is there anybody from the public who wishes to comment on anything? All righty, that takes us to number eight. We have our reports, HHS Direct. Okay, so I will start with the, um, just to give you a little bit of a budget overview, we are working on the budget right now. Um, all the managers are working on their portions, getting them turned into me, and then I will turn them into Stephanie. Um, we have a meeting set up with uh, Candace and Larry for July 23rd um, to present the budget to them. So next month, we'll have a full budget to present to you. Some of the highlights um, for our budget is we are proposing the addition of two positions. One is an economic support supervisor. Um, we will bring that back to you next month. Another one is a recovery services coordinator position, and Brandy will present on that later in the meeting. Um, our placement budget, we're asking that to remain status quo, and we are not gonna renew our CST contract with the state. So CST is coordinated services team, and what the goal of that is to um, for children who are in two service two um, services, so it could be um, they have an IEP at school and they have mental health treatment, bringing a team together to help support that child. Um, we just have found that we have not been able to get that program off the ground and grow as we want it to. Um, we've had the same person in the position for over two years, and we really just have stalled. On average, we have one to two people that are involved. Um, the state does give us 60,000, but we have a $12,000 match. We just feel that those funds could be better utilized in another way. And so that is one program that we're not going to renew um, our contract with DHS. And then another thing, and we'll talk about this more later, is to have a contract for a mental health therapist. For a part of our clinic, we do need to have a mental health therapist to keep all the other services going. We have been unable to hire one, so we'll be asking this committee and then full county board for us to be able to contract 
with the mental health therapist. So those are some of our budget highlights. Um, any questions from anyone on that? So then I will just go over department unwinding or department updates. I'm sorry. Um, with our economic support unit, our unwinding is um, ending. So that was all the individuals whose Medicaid stayed through the pandemic had to be renewed in the last year. So that finished up in the month of June. Um, so now they're going to return to status quo with one set of rules to follow. So that will be good for them. And our public health unit, um, our public health specialist um, left. He worked with us for just about a month and um, quit. And so we will be hiring for that position. And then um, the chip work, um, he'll be presenting. Evan has been taking the lead. Evan Ewing is our public health specialist. He's taken the lead on that. And he will come to the August meeting to present kind of where we're at with that. Um, because this was an evening meeting, he couldn't make it work to come tonight, so we're moving that to next month. Um, with our ADRC um, updates, um, the staff have just completed their first offering of the evidence-based health promotion program, Bingo Size, um, and it was a success, and they're looking to do another one this fall, so we're excited to have that as an offering for the community. Um, we did have a new ADRC specialist start on June 24th, so the ADRC right now is fully staffed, which is wonderful. And then the last thing with um, department updates, the staff have been working on their PAQ, so those are the position analysis, analysis questionnaire. Thank you. Um, so that's been fun. Everybody's been working hard on those, and our goal is to have all of those turned in by the end of the day Wednesday. So we can see. So the last thing that we have that I wanted to um, discuss with the committee is some changes into the administrative and financial services unit. Um, so when are you looking at me? Did you walk well, talk? We can both kind of jump in here. Um, when Jamie left and went to the ADRC, she was our confidential administrative assistant. Um, she took a position in the ADRC, and so we opted at that time not to fill the position. We have since felt that the best utilization of that position at this time is to fill it as a fiscal specialist. Um, it is a grade lower. The biggest reason we're looking to do that is we have an anticipated retirement of one of our fiscal specialists. We felt if we were able to bring a new person on, they could learn all the tasks and that could be a smooth transition. Um, so we would be adding this for the short term um, and then really regrouping after we um, have Tyler Technologies and the fiscal software, HR payroll, really regrouping after that. But we want to make sure that this transition with one of our retirements leaving is a smooth transition. So because it's a grade lower, we don't need permission. It's not filling a new one. Um, Candace does support this. I just really wanted to bring it to you to make sure you guys were aware. And if you had any questions, be able to answer those. Any questions from the committee? Just a second. Were you raising hand? Okay. Um, back on the PAQs, I just wanted to clarify. State what that means again. Position analysis questionnaire. And that is um, in for the wage study that you're Correct. currently having done. So <laughs> it's another acronym that we had not on the list. That's in the it's not, but that's just like a one time, well, not one time, but something that we're doing hopefully current. One yeah, hopefully one time. <laughs> I don't know how well. Every company that does it. Probably. Uh, there was something else. Oh, I was going to ask. With the public health specialist, was there any specific reason that we cannot? I mean, was there? I know he was not from our area. I think that was part of it was the commute, um, and I think there was some technology challenges. Okay. Have we had any? How long has that been advertised? Last week. Okay. We posted it. Um, I think we've received seven applications oh. for it. Yes. Well, nice to be honest. Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah. Are those all public health specialists or any public health nurses? No nurses, all specialists. Okay. Yeah. But they all have some training of some sort or some knowledge base. Many of them have their masters in public health. I'd say. No, oh, wow. Yeah. That's a knowledge base. Uh, no. Yeah. 
All right, committee, any other questions on the updates or budget? Okay, um, 8B is our HHS expenditures report. I don't know if there was anything you wanted to comment on that. Um, I didn't know if anybody had a chance to look at them, uh, just to note that if, if anybody does pay attention to ups and downs in the number of paid invoices, it was high, 78,000, that's a little high, outside of the norm. Um, but what we did is we paid for um, our smartphone technologies um, switches with over 24,000, over 24,000. Um, that had been approved by County Board last month. We also um, were able to uh, we paid for our uh, leadership training, the first round that was completed. So we paid for that. That was twelve over twelve thousand, um, and then we um, stocked up on um, Medicaid assisted uh, the the injections that we do through the jail. So stocked that was over six thousand. So it was a little bit high because it was higher priced items. So otherwise, nothing. Okay. Any comments or questions? 8C then is our 2024 HHS budget summary and the Richland County placement report. Again, hopefully you guys had a chance to look over that. Anything you wanted to discuss in particular? Um, nothing other, um, other than to point out my director did review it and found that made a mistake, but this is the budget balance through May, not April. <laughs> so I need to work on my attention to detail skills. Um, but yeah, so really nothing. We should be at about 42% utilization. If you review it, administrative services is really the only one that's kind of borderline there. Everything else we're under. Um, Whereas I really don't, we're kind of, we're in a good place right now. Um, can't think of anything that's going to make, it, make a huge change in that. Questions from the committee? For that's for the budget and then placement report. Um, adult placement fund fund four fifty four is is in a really really good position, about fifteen percent utilized. Um, and children's placements, they're under forty two percent. They're at thirty nine percent. So, but that one I don't see that going down. So that's going to continue to kind of stay up there. So, which is why we're not asking for reductions because. You just never know. Right. So if we do underutilize the adult placement, does that then just go back to the, the general fund? Right now it's still sitting in there. It's been sort of turned into more of a non-lapsing fund. Okay. Um it had it, it can be. They could determine that they want it to all go. Okay. Um, but we're kind of I could like some that cash on the cash balance in there just to make sure that maybe in future years that we could maybe not have to ask for as much tax living necessarily if it stays not lapsing, kind of build it up. So uh, I think those are discussions we're going to be yeah, having, yeah. especially yeah. with yeah. the new reorg right. of the general ledger, the way that we're looking Correct. kind of break things out and clean things up, and then with the new system as well, when we're going to be able to. Kind of tag that a little bit easier and designate which ones we want to have a carryover, and if they hit right. a certain point, then then it just transitions. Yeah. So so we'll have a lot more conversations with the auditors about things like that. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. Sounds good to me. Any questions? Okay. And uh, number nine, contract approvals. So the first one that you will see. Um, was the Vista Care contract? There's no action that needs to be taken on this one. We just had to amend it because the individual we have there, her daily rate changed, but it was less than the 15% benchmark. So I was allowed to approve that contract without bringing it back to the board. Um, the two contracts that we do need approval for um, I'm going to start with the second one. Tiffany Wilson wants to do some horse therapy um, with our CCS program. So that is a contract for 49.5. But we're also looking to enter into a contract with Tracy Benton to provide um, mental health therapy. And I'm going to have Brandy talk about that. Um, so we've had the mental health therapist position open since April, um, I believe, and we've been unable to fill it. Uh, so we looked into contracting with a provider um, and we were able to find one, Tracy Benton. She's been a CCS provider that we've utilized for many years. Um, and she kind of jumped at the opportunity 
to do this. Um, is in a, a higher contract. Her rate is higher. Um, I think it was one one thirty an hour. Um, but if we don't have a therapist in our clinic, we could lose our clinic license. So we would have no psychiatrist. Um, our nurse practitioner would be able to prescribe our psychologist. And then that would also impact our crisis license where we may not be able to have um, our crisis either. So um, there was talk when we were talking about her, she was interested in insurance and other things. So there may be talk of hopefully making her county down the road, but for now she wanted to stay an independent contractor. We did look to other options. Um, a lot of the other options that we looked into were online only, um, and that created a whole nother set of problems. Um, if we do it all online and they come in, we need a receptionist that can get them set in the room, set up in the room, ensure that confidentiality, escort them out. The cost would have been a little bit cheaper to do it that way, but we would have had a better position. So we thought this was really the best option. And then we also would have had to have a different contract for to fulfill our jail mental health requirements. So we would need someone else then to come in and do that because the jail didn't want to do telehealth. And Tracy Ben can do. Yep, yep. She'll do um, 37 hours a week. Um, and then two hours a week will be jail mental health, and then the rest is outpatient therapy. And we're going to um, start scheduling her now. She's not going to start fully taking patients out. In our clinic until September, but this gives us an opportunity to get her credentials and her caseload established. So that way, when she starts, she'll be able to start billing right away. So, <laughs> so, um, so I'm looking at it from the fact that we're not filling the one position. So that one position is going to partially fund it. The rest of it, um, we're hopeful that the, the billing that we can do through insurance, Medicaid, and insurance can hopefully cover them a good chunk of it. So, but yeah, we're going to put a little bit of money around. But I think between the billing and the billing piece and what we already have in the budget for it, it should be great. Okay. Um, any, any questions? Awesome. Can I ask, is that a Tiffany Olson that did the treatment group? Yes. Yeah. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Okay. All right, so we need two separate motions for those two? Yes. As Tracy's, we'll have to go to full count. Okay, and then the other one we just split? Just, yep. Okay. And so with Tracy, you'll see there also is a resolution in the face of that. Yes. Okay. So hopefully you guys saw that too. It's 9A. Then is the actual resolution that we'll be making a motion for for Tracy Benton. I will make that motion. Thank you, Ms. Ticker. Do I have a second? I'll make a second. Ms. Kramer, any other discussion on that? Otherwise, we'll vote on sending that to uh, the county board. So all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, and then we'll then need a motion to approve the contract with Tiffany Olson. I'll make that motion to approve the contract. Thank you, Ms. Kramer. Do I have a second? I'll second. Thank you, Mr. Brewer. Any other comments or questions or discussion? All right, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, 10 resolution. So 10 A is resolution approving the Department of Health and Human Services applying for and accepting a 2025 section 5310 vehicle and operating plan. So, so every year we apply for the 5310 operating assistance grant. This grant helps us be able to provide our bus transportation program. So by applying for this grant, it's a 50% match. But none of the match has to be tax levy, so we can use other program um, income and our 8521 grant to match this. So this helps us leverage another about $37,000 in potential funding to help support the bus program. And a very successful program. Okay. It has been, yeah. Yeah, we've gotten the grant 13 years in a row, so hopefully we'll get it again this year. It's getting more and more competitive, but... 
Anybody have comments, especially those that are newer to the board? No. This is the transportation part of like the busing and all that stuff around. Is that what we're talking about? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we provide bus routes that go out into the community five days a week. Um, we only run if we have passengers, but we go out to Vernon County, take people all the way to Brookville, bring people back into Richland Center. We go to Grant County, Sauk County um, to do those. And then we also do wheelchair transportation, on demand wheelchair to transportation. How many do we have buses? So we have two, and then we have four part-time drivers. Right. So 10 um, a, then in your packet is the actual again resolution as it will be sent to the board. Do I have a motion to send this on? I have a motion. Okay. Okay. So first paper and then three Miller. Um, any further discussion? Not all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Be opposed. Okay. Thank you. Rex. Thank you. All right, uh, number 11, discussion and possible action creation of a recovery services coordinator position. Uh, so a couple months ago, DHS sent out a grant and it was to link um, AODA services or substance abuse services to people in communities. Um, and Trisha and I both really liked the idea of it, but the grant turnaround, it was like two weeks from when they sent the email out and we just didn't think it'd be realistic. Um, so kind of was like, oh, maybe next year thing. So when I was looking at the budget and going over my portion, we have a lot of substance abuse funds that we're not utilizing to its full potential, uh, within like three or four different grants. So kind of had a light bulb moment and was like, maybe we can utilize this grant with the money we already have to create this position. Um, so the idea came about of a recovery services coordinator. So this position is 100% grant funded. Um, it would be our jail, MAT, our Vivitrol grant, part of the treatment core grant, um, the SOAR grant, and some of the AODA block grant is what we're thinking. Um, and these are all grants we're guaranteed for, I think like the next almost five years for all of them. Um, one of them will be in a couple of years, we'll have to renew that one, but. Um, so essentially what this person would do is they would link people to all the different AODA services that we have to offer in the county. Um, they would start their day by calling the jail and saying, asking if anybody was booked in on any um, substance abuse or alcohol related charges. And if they would, they'd meet with them right away to be, to kind of assess what they need. You know, we have a residential treatment room and board grant that we're not utilizing. Do you wanna see if you meet criteria? We have this great program at the jail um, to offer Vivitrol. Is that something you're interested in? Is treatment court something you're interested in? Kind of starting that first line of defense right there. Um, this person would go up to the hospital if there's somebody there for detox and they would assess them to see what level of care they need. They would make referrals. If somebody's from Grant County and they want services, this person would coordinate with Grant County to help get this person services and those um, things that they need. Um, this position can also help with some prevention work. So partnering with law enforcement and partners for prevention um, to do some youth education in the community um, and then assisting treatment court. There's times where somebody's sick and they can't make it to the sheriff's department to do a UA. Um, well, then that's a violation and they could end up in jail for that. So this person could help bridge that gap and go do the UA with that person. So that way that person, we're not filling up our jails for something. Um, Assist with treatment court groups. Our treatment court is at the highest capacity it's been at, and it just continues to grow. Um, the program's capable of housing 15 people, and I think we have 13 right now. So um, offering some support to that program. Um, and like I said, it's all grant funded. So that is what we're going to do with that. Did I miss anything? So we're looking to come to you guys first to get your blessing. We would then continue to work on making sure it can work into the budget. And then when we have our budget meeting, taking it to Candace and Larry, getting that proposal, if we can make it through that process, then taking it to the full county board for their approval. We really wanna have your blessing. Just to start. And if I may, the other piece that we discussed is that if at any point the grant funding is not renewed, this position goes away. So it will never be a, a county tax levy funded position. Um, 
you know, we just thought that was very important that the effort is going to be made to fund this through grant dollars and when and if it can't be, you know, and that gives us time to evaluate the sustainability of the position. And then at that point, if it's really a successful position and we feel like we can come back and say, you know what, this is a successful position that we think is worth funding with some tax levy dollars, we can have data to back it up. But initially in that in that starting period, it's it's kind of a no, nope, we're gonna try this out and see how it goes. And we did have meetings with the judge and um, sheriff, and both think it's going to be an asset for now. So um, I have both of their blessings too for this as well. Is there or will there be a job description? Right. Yep, I just did the PAQ for that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that turned in. So. Um, any questions? I just have one. Yeah. Um, and it basically just and it has to do with the with the uh, position, heck, the job description, et cetera. Um, just some assurances, I guess, that the linkage with preventive services are included, are hardwired into the job description along with all of the recovery component yep. of it. Yep. Uh, this position would take our the HHS, the behavioral health unit with partners of prevention and work with Betsy and attend those meetings and um, whatever else we could do for prevention, a community partnering with law enforcement, things like that. You mentioned you want to take this to the July budget. When we meet with Candace and Larry, we'll take it to the okay. Yes. And then it would go to finance next, or would it go to? My first concern is I just want to really make sure that number one, we can make it work into the budget. Uh -huh. Number two, we don't know what the PAQ is going to come back. So if it comes back in some astronomical amount, it's not going to be feasible um, to do it. So I just really want to start with here and we can give you an update next month. when we. Have okay, that, that was going to be my question because I like this idea, but I would love to see that job description, okay. I guess. Um, so I don't know, do we, you want us to specifically vote on this or just say like, go ahead pursuing it? I think if you just say, go ahead, pursue it, I'm comfortable yeah. with that. Yes. Does anybody have any concerns or issues with that? No, sounds, sounds great. Way to be creative with both mm -hmm. that. Right. And way to lot, not leave money on the table. Exactly. Utilizing <laughs> it, way to go. Thank you. Okay, number 12, correspondence. Um, any future agenda items? or We'll do an overview of the chip process oh, and yes. where we're at with that. That's community health improvement plan. So we will have an up and coming present on that. And then you mentioned bringing or showing us Break the budget. budget. Yes. Right. So that, that might be a like, It's probably enough extra yeah. <laughs> <laughs> agenda items for next month. But does anybody have anything else? This is a lot shorter than I thought it might be. Yes, so it's nice. Wow. Yes. Are we adjourned, Madam Chair? Will the meetings be typically at this time of day? No, this was just for the public hearing. Yes. And I was speaking with Director Comments about that. I think on the time that I have been on this, and we're gonna do some background research to make sure this statement is true, but I'm pretty sure that on the time that I've been on this committee, we've never really had any public comments at our public hearing uh, for budget. Now, that doesn't mean, obviously, we still need to keep doing it, and I still want to hear from the public, but I'm thinking that possibly we don't need to continue doing the evening meeting. We do have Zoom options available, like if somebody really did want to comment, they can zoom in. I don't know that we need to continue doing an evening meeting once a year, but I would welcome. Um, Maybe with with more fanfare. More fanfare. Well, more notice. Maybe we'll make one be there. Well, there was notice. Yeah, we posted this a couple weeks ago, about a week and a half ago. This was posted. I remember some evening meetings. And it was packed over there. And, that must have been before my time because I don't remember that. But I mean, I'm I'm fine with. We can have this discussion again next year too. But I I just was thinking that that was a possibility rather than switch up our time. But we can you guys can think about it and discuss that. 
later. Well, we had this discussion. <laughs> Candace, can you yeah. verify? So, I was a little weird. We publish these meetings on the county website, um, bulletin board downstairs, um, and then they go to the observer, your RCO. Um, usually they're posted at the library. So there's a whole big listing of like media morning. that they go out to. So I didn't publish, I didn't look. There's a huge listing of places that they go out to. I mean, if you feel like we need more, I mean, we could certainly consider doing something like a radio spot. It was amazing. I don't know. All right, well, we can discuss that further later. Um, but no, to answer your question, we'll go back to our 930 time. So that, and actually, that brings up another point for me because our next meeting would be then the first or second Thursday. First. first, so that first. oh August first. Well, then I'm not missing it. Okay, I thought I was going to be gone on vacation, but we'll be here. So August first at nine thirty will be our next next meeting. Do I have a motion to adjourn until that? I'll move. Thank you. Second. I will second. All right. All those in favor, please say aye. Would you say for meeting in time? The same as normal. It's back to nine thirty. August in the morning. In the morning? Yes. The this day. is just a one time back evening to, meeting. And back to your normal day. Normal first Thursday at 9 30. I didn't think anybody would want to come on the first. No. <laughs> Pretty sure we would have had to pay you guys all the time. I'm like, yeah. So. Other comments? I'm sorry. Us. Kramer. All right. All those in favor? Say aye. Any opposed? Hey, we are adjourned. Thank you all very much. Have a wonderful evening. Great meeting, Ingrid. Thank you. Thanks to these guys. I want to go.